Starting now, I'm going to teach you everything. All of my ways, all of my secrets. And we're going to take as long as we need. Welcome to the Hall of Doom Armory Legends PvE Guide. In this video, I will teach you all you need to run the fastest, most nuanced map in as little time as possible. Ideally, less than 7 minutes if you're proficient with your character. This is also, by far, the most complex LPVE map, so there's a lot to digest. If anything is unclear, ask me in the comments or on the forum. Also, see the video description and the LPVE Master Guide for character preferences and additional details. You will spawn into the first hallway with your timer already at 8 to 15 seconds, depending on your system and connection. The first quirk you'll encounter in this map is that you will speak to Magent Solranus twice before he lowers the magical barrier. As soon as he does, everyone will enter fast movement mode and blitz the first mandatory sub-boss, Demon Lord, before enemies spawn in the hallway. Anyone who drags their heels here will be attacked, costing the run a lot of time. When you reach Demon Lord's chamber, everything you have evaded up to that point will be hot on your trail, so it's important to take him out quickly. There are eight explosive red crystals in the chamber, four on each side. One player, ideally the overall fastest, will throw three of the crystals from the left at Demon Lord before attacking, while another player immediately engages him directly. Concurrently, the last two players will move the remaining five crystals to the Arcanum entrance. Once Demon Lord is down, a cutscene will be triggered as soon as a player moves over the top of the second set of stairs from either direction. By the time the cutscene is over, the enemies you skip will have caught up to you, so the team needs to move fast. The players who defeated Demon Lord should now help grab any remaining crystals and proceed immediately to the boss before they're overrun. It's not a bad idea to use an AoE crowd control or shield power before picking up a crystal. This will buy you a valuable second or two in fast movement and help ensure your survival, as it's likely the team is spread too thin for the group healing aura at this point. Everyone should watch each other's help bars and provide support to any member who looks like they may need it. Also, with this many enemies attacking, some players might be taking a lot of damage fast. If you find yourself in that situation, don't be afraid to ignore a crystal and cut your losses to stay alive as a downed member is a greater time loss than a lost crystal. There are several important things you should know about red crystals. First, they can't be destroyed by damage like red barrels. You can hit them and they will not explode. Only throwing or smashing them sets them off. Second, the ranged attacks of most weapons can be used to propel the crystals forward a great distance. This is an effective method for getting all of the gathered crystals safely to the back of the Arcanum quickly. Third, the army of stone soldiers chasing you will try to follow, pick up, and smash the crystals. The players carrying crystals to the boss room need to watch for any stone soldiers making their way to the crystal stash and protect the crystals from them. If a stone soldier does succeed in picking up a crystal, you can force them to safely drop it with any crowd control power. Only the stone soldiers that precede the boss room exhibit this behavior. Next, like red barrels, red crystals deal damage to their targets based on a percentage of their max health meaning they don't hit adds or sub-bosses very hard, but they take large chunks from major bosses. Lastly, red crystals will despawn if taken too far from their spawn point. You don't need to worry about that with these crystals, since you'll be using them all in the first boss. However, you may have noticed that there are some red crystals in the first large room we passed. We don't stop for those for three reasons. One, they will despawn if carried to the boss room. Two, if you try to bring them with you, the enemies on the floor there will land hits and have more time to catch up to you, slowing your run down. And three, we simply don't need them. All the crystals we need are already with Demon Lord, and bringing the earlier ones just results in a time loss. As soon as the door to the Arcanum opens, one player should run a crystal to the back of the room as quickly as possible to trigger the next event, while the remaining players use ranged attacks to launch the other crystals in while protecting them from stone soldiers. 10 seconds after the event has been triggered, the door will close and any crystals not in the room yet will be lost. 10 seconds after that, the teleporter will disappear and any players not in the room yet will be locked out. Ideally, at least one player should stay outside the door, crowd controlling the swarm of enemies, to prevent them from entering then using the teleporter as soon as the door closes. You can also just let them in and take them out alongside the room spawns. You get a bit of a break at this point, as all you have to do is consolidate the red crystals safely at the back of the room and eliminate the stone soldiers as they animate over the course of the next 60 seconds. Shortly after the final group rises, the bronze idol sub-boss in the center of the room will come alive. He initiates combat with a massive axe swing that will knock everyone to the outer walls of the Arcanum, so you should immediately pop an offensive power clipped with Breakout the moment he becomes targetable. Do not waste any red crystals on bronze idol. 
He hardly has any health and you will lose time if you use a crystal on him instead of the major boss. As soon as Bronze Idol is defeated, three players should go pick up the red crystals and red barrel and get ready to lock target and throw them at the boss. The fourth player stands directly beside the yet to be activated iron statue, attacking it as soon as it becomes targetable. This is to ensure the iron statue doesn't jump away from its starting position and either cause crystals to miss or force players to delay their throws. If the team was successful in bringing all six crystals into the Arcanum and you land them all on the boss, you'll either defeat it outright or leave it with a sliver of health. As soon as the iron statue goes down, the group will move down the next hallway as quickly as possible. The turrets are predictive and aim where they think you're going to be, not where you currently are, so adjust your trajectory after they fire if you're not dashing or using hasten to burst. As far as we can tell, the key enemies you need to defeat to open this door are randomized, so the group should pump out as much AoE burst damage as they can to eliminate as many targets as possible. The turrets will continue to knock your allies and brainiacs around, so it may be worth popping Breakout again if it's off cooldown. Once the door opens, head straight to the back room with Toy Man's dolls. The first player in the room should run past the dolls and destroy the white Cyclone Barrel at the back left of the room. This is to prevent it from causing problems later, as if left alone, it will inevitably be destroyed while you fight the sub-boss, knocking your team around and causing delays. Optionally, players can also pick up the other Cyclone Barrels in the room and throw them at the Servitor and animated power suits making their way to you, but this isn't necessary with good positioning and fast teamwork. Quickly eliminate the dolls that come to life in the center of the room. Once they're down, it's important that your team moves to the gift boxes on the right, i.e. west side of the room, and focuses on dolls that spawn from them while, for now, ignoring the dolls that spawn on the opposite side of the room. This forces the left side dolls to funnel over to you and away from the cyclone barrels on the east wall that would scatter them. All of the dolls need to be defeated to spawn the terrifying Travis sub-boss you need to defeat to open the door. Focus the sub-boss with single target rotations. The other enemies can be ignored. If you weren't fast enough clearing this room, there's a chance that all of the animated power suits and earlier enemies might be caught up and focus firing a single person in the group, so watch your health and that of others. If someone's in trouble, take a second to crowd control the swarm. If you were the one taking heavy damage in that situation, throw some crowd control, then block it out and let the group heal keep you alive. Once Terrifying Travis is defeated, immediately head through the door and down the hallway to the garage to trigger the next cutscene. If you were a flying character in fast movement mode when the cutscene triggers, you will remain in motion during the cutscene and can even aim yourself such that you end up behind the boss. This is not advantageous, however, and it will cost you time, so it's best to stop flying when you're the one who triggers the cutscene. From this point on, the team's goal is to protect and carry forward one red barrel per room as you advance, which I will point out as we go. The garage contains more than enough red barrels to quickly defeat the Havoc Servitor. To land them on target as quickly as possible, there are some important points to keep in mind. Red Barrel damage alone does not initiate combat when striking a non-aggressive enemy. Be sure to do a follow-up ranged tap after you throw the first barrel, or the boss will continue to passively regen health and negate a huge chunk of your damage. When you pick up an object, your movement is unlocked. When you throw a barrel, your movement becomes locked to combat mode. Plan your route to minimize time spent in slow movement by throwing your current barrel only after minimizing your distance to the next one. The garage also contains black encased wormhole barrels. Do not throw these barrels at the boss or detonate them in any way. The black holes they create will suck in the red barrels you throw and actually protect the Havoc Servitor from taking damage, costing you a lot of time and knocking your team around. If the Havoc Servitor is targeting you, he will spam a slowed down and reskinned version of Martial Arts' Enhanced Shuriken Storm combo with two small energy balls followed by a third larger one. The third energy ball can knock you down and detonate any nearby barrels, so if he's targeting you with his ranged combo, it's important to not be near red barrels when the final ball reaches you. Once Havoc Servitor is defeated, one player should pick up the red barrel to the right of the exit and deposit it safely in the back left corner of the next room. In order to open the next door, the team needs to deal enough damage to the three neural crawlers for them to explode into Neuromites. You don't have to defeat the Neuromites. Once a neural crawler stops taking damage and its overload animation starts, you can move on to the next. Sometimes, a neural crawler will spawn halfway up the right wall, well out of your immediate line of sight, but this is extremely rare. 
When the door opens, one player should head back and grab the red barrel to the left of the entrance to the Neurocrawler room, while another picks up the one previously left for safekeeping. The fastest player should be speeding down the hallway and taking out the Adherent in the center of the next room with single target rotations, ignoring all other enemies. The second player in the room needs to quickly move the nearby red barrel away from the Neurocrawlers, as after about 6 seconds of spawning they will use an AoE attack that detonates it. Barrel carriers can either safely deposit their barrels in the back left or right corners of the room, or hold them until the Adherent is defeated. Once the Adherent goes down, the team needs to pick up any surviving barrels and get ready to move. When the door opens, run past everything, ideally with the whole group going the same direction, to the back of the next chamber where there is a second Adherent. Quickly burst it down to unlock the final boss in the missile silo. Barrel carriers should temporarily deposit their barrels in the round alcoves at the back corners of the room. If they try to hold them, they'll likely be knocked out of their hands and destroyed. Once this adherent is down, everyone try to pick up any surviving barrels and head into the boss room as quickly as possible. Anyone who doesn't have a barrel should throw a crowd control AoE power to help protect the barrel carriers. Now for the most critical part of the speedrun. How your team initiates the final boss will make or break your runtime, so it's important to thoroughly understand two of System Breaker's nuances. First, System Breaker has three phases. Each time you take it down to 50% health, its size and maximum health will be doubled. More important, however, is that each phase has a different timer for when the boss summons its kilobit allies, which will heal it. Pushing a phase fast enough resets that timer, and if you manage to push all the way to the final form quickly, you will barely have to deal with the healing mechanic, if at all. As such, the team needs to start the fight with as much coordinated burst damage as possible, by dumping all of the red barrels on them as quickly as they can. Also, even if you don't manage to get any extra barrels into the silo, you can still push to the final phase quickly enough to skip the adds with just the barrels in the room. Second, System Breaker's aggro is proximity based and his summon timer starts as soon as he attacks you. This means that if someone in the group gets too close too early, you won't be able to push the phases fast enough and he'll summon his healing drones, dramatically lengthening the fight. There are five red barrels in the room, two at the back left, one at the back right, and one each at the front left and front right, plus however many you manage to carry in from the outside. Don't go for the front barrels first because you'll start the fight prematurely, but get them as soon as you can once you've initiated combat as they're at risk of being destroyed. Once you've pushed through to the final phase and all the barrels are gone, zerg the boss down with single target rotations. System Breaker has a much broader top surface than other bosses, and there's room for two or three players of the correct weapon types to increase their attack speed by standing on his head without stacking on top of each other. However, his massive chrome dome will surround your character model, so you either have to zoom in all the way, know your combos by feel and sound, or watch your white numbers to know when to clip. If the team takes the boss out fast enough, you won't have to deal with kilobits at all, with System Breaker only getting a single spawn off just before dying. If you made a mistake and weren't able to push the faces in time to stop the kilobits from spawning, you will likely have to kill any and all kilobits that spawn, but you can ignore the wardens. If the team did everything correctly, you should have an easy 6.5 to 7 minute run or less. Hiccups or errors might push you into the 7 to 8 minute range, but with practice and coordination, you will see consistent, extremely short runs in Hall of Doom, much shorter than runs on any other map. Even just three solid players who know what they're doing can consistently force an 8 minute run, regardless of the participation level of a pug. Two good players can push a 9 to 10 minute run if and only if at least one pug keeps up with them for the group heal aura, but that's a pretty big if, so I don't generally recommend running this map without at least two or three people who are on the same page. If you'd like to see these tactics in action in real time, click the video at the top right.